Hey everyone, welcome back to our Pizza Tower party. Today, we're going to continue listening to the amazing soundtrack of Pizza Tower. In our previous episodes, we discovered some seriously cool musical elements with tracks such as It's Pizza Time and Unexpectancy. Today, we're going to dig even deeper, deeper than a Chicago deep dish. Get ready to uncover the secrets behind some of the catchiest tunes in the game, such as Tombstone, Arizona, and Cold Spaghetti. So grab a slice, kick back, and let's have some fun analyzing the music of Pizza Tower. Let's dive right into it. Oh my god, that chord progression is already sounding very... It's sound, already sounding very gothic. People were right to say that this song has a Castlevania vibe. And with just the first eight seconds, I, I can already say, oh my god, this is going to be an epic gothic ride. He turns the minor chord into a major chord? What? What? There it is. There it is. The pipe organ, the church organ, just to double down on the gothic vibe. I mean, it already started with the chord progression. That's like the intro of one of the Earthbound songs. Is it being friends? And anyway, I digress. I, ah, I can already tell that this is going to be like a serious bop. And this chord progression, this is so tasteful. This is my kind of chord progression. Yes! Oh my god. What a beautiful chord progression plus melody. Oh, wow. I can already feel the gothic vibe, the tombstone vibe. Oh my god. Oh my god. Uh, uh, okay, that synth, that pipe organ synth with the delay. That is both 80s and gothic and Castlevania. And it's like, wow. <laughs> Okay, just one note. The way that lead guitar is being played, it's so grounded. It's so realistic. I can imagine that is how a lead guitar player would play this type of jam, this type of chord progression in a live gig setting. Well, for me at least, for, for a live gigging musician like me, it's so relatable. <laughs>
what a tasteful triplet. Oh my god. This arrangement is so much hitting all my inner musical arranger vibes because I probably would be arranging in this style as well if I was asked to write music for Pizza Tower. <laughs> it's amazing. Oh my god, it's so real. It's so realistic. Like I said, a legit lead guitarist would play it that way in a live setting. Okay, I can definitely see why some of you commented that this has such heavy Castlevania vibes. I can already imagine just with the chord progression alone, but also with the instrumentation, with the pipe organ and the slower vibe. The pacing of Castlevania has always been much more of a brisk walk, a slower pace compared to the more high octane soundtracks of Pizza Tower like Pizza Time or An Expectancy. This is more of a casual walk but very gothic walk. I mean, this music with the tempo that it chose very much goes with that vibe. Let's listen to Cold Spaghetti. Oh my god, I know it's a different game, it's a different sounding synth patch, but it's still giving me dummy or ghost battle vibes from Undertale. Probably because of the meter, probably because of the beat and the tempo, shuffle, but oh my god.
this is a great example of traditional blues in a video game setting. Traditional blues in the sense that it's using very traditional blues chord progression. Very much a bop. I love this halftime vibe. What? Damn it. Wow. That is such a jam. I can imagine like three friends, three musician friends jamming together and they have their own synth type of instruments like this, like blues jamming together. <laughs> and I'm just into it. I love it. Okay, first of all, I love how without any context of a game, just musical context, I love how this is pretty much a very jazz slash blues jam, very music lounge, very music bar type of jam. <laughs> I love it. to check out my other Pizza Tower videos if you're looking for your favorite track.
hot spaghetti. Let's go. Okay, first of all, I can see why people are saying that this is the sister song of Cold Spaghetti. The same melody. Very bluesy, very jazz motif. Dare I say, this is the heavier counterpart. I love this. Oh my God. That feels so heavy and tasteful at the same time. Oh my God. I would say between cold spaghetti and hot spaghetti, this is the more metal counterpart. This is so beautiful. This is, oh my God, just, oh, beautiful. Oh my God. I can immediately imagine whoever is doing the instrumental solo for, for this particular section, they are just feeling the vibe of the blues and jazz. They are just like taking their time, enjoying the vibe of the scale, of the blues, jazz scale. They're not even doing the flashy type of solo. It's more of an atmospheric, it's more of a vibey type of solo that is more about the feeling rather than the skill. And oh, I'm just all for it. Wow. I give up. I mean, when it comes to music suggestions, your music suggestions, I'm always very much skeptical. People say that this soundtrack is a bop. Really? I'm going to check it out for myself. And after doing music reaction videos for maybe three months, I, th I think I pretty much give up on being skeptical. Stringies, this is pretty much the moment where I realize that I trust you. When you say that a video game soundtrack is a bop, I think I'm no longer gonna doubt you.
<laughs> oh my god, that very MIDI sounding guitar intro felt kind of nostalgic to me in terms of the 90s gaming soundtracks like Doom. But then when that drum pattern entered, the tempo and the way it was arranged, it was giving me so much Daft Punk vibes. Oh my god. If you know me personally, and if you know me well, and you know my taste in music, I only really give a damn to one, just one mainstream artist, one mainstream group, and that is Daft Punk. Oh my god, it's one thing to have your song arranged in a sort of funk metal style, like how it started in the first few seconds, but then you have this serious dramatic chord progression that is only indicative of someone who is like a serious composer who knows their music theory, who knows their harmonics, who knows their chord progression. This is definitely a sign of that. I, I mean, I just love how this music is just such a bop. There's a certain simplicity to it, but it doesn't matter. It's a bop. I'm dancing inside. Wow, number one, that is such a bop. But also, the way that chord progression was arranged, even with heavy guitar sounding patches, that is an indication of someone who really knows and really respects traditional chord progressions. And this is such a tasteful type of chord progression. My kind of chord progression, there is some serious classical music chord progression, harmonic progression sensibilities going on in here. And that is just very much an indication of a very well-educated background or at least a very well-researched background. It's amazing. Oh my god. Okay, this section right here, this is giving me Chopin vibes. Like Frederick Chopin. Frederick Chopin. Ch Chopin. Chopin. Oh my god. I, how do we even pronounce Chopin? Chopin. Frederick Chopin vibes with this sensibility in chord progression, but also at the same time, it's also giving me a lot of Daft Punk's chord progression vibes. So does that mean Chopin and Daft Punk, they're like one and the same person, born in different periods? Whatever conclusion you may come up with, what I'm saying is they're beautiful, they're a banger, and it's just amazing.
Oh my god. I'm not even thinking video game music right now. I know this is written for video game music. This is essentially video game music. But just with this section alone, I'm having intense imageries of like a DJ concert. Like Tiesto or Daft Punk in like a huge stadium and everyone's just like dancing, jumping around and just vibing to the music. This is serious stadium music vibes. I love it. Is what I'm saying? I love it. God. Oh my God. That is epic. it for today's episode keep jamming to those pizza tower tunes and i'll see you next time for more music analysis fun remember the power of pizza is strong in all of us